Hello everyone! <laughs> Welcome to my quarantine, aka my living room. I am back in England. I'm not at home home anymore. Home home meaning my parents' house. I'm at my home and I'm self-isolating in this very difficult period because Shock horror, I have coronavirus symptoms. I'm fine, <laughs> I'm very fine. I do have the persistent dry cough. I also have no sense of smell or taste. Literally everything tastes like cardboard. I cannot smell the strongest perfume. I've even stuck incense up my nose and realized it's not, I can't smell it. Those are symptoms that are coming out now as those who are carrying it and going undetected. Um, I'm just gonna assume that I have got the virus. If I were going about my everyday business, I would be spreading it. So I've quarantined myself, um, as anyone should, I think, if they have these this undetectable symptom. But as it goes, you know, last night and this morning, I've sort of developed the dry cough that I was expecting, maybe. Don't ignore it if it's, if you've, if you kind of suddenly lost sense of smell because, you know, it was a bit bizarre and a bit random and I was thinking that's gonna be it. I'm here today with a and a and I did put on my Instagram a few days ago if anyone wanted, if anyone's got any questions, they can always ask me and I would answer them in a video. So here we are. I screenshotted them, so I'll put them on the screen as well so you can get a little shout out. My number one question, do you miss Austria already? The answer to that is yes. <laughs> I do miss it because, you know, there's nothing exciting going on in England right now. Same as Austria, really. Obviously, school's out, so I can't perform. Theatres are closed, so, I mean, I'd be there for no reason and probably be just as bored in Austria as I am here. The only difference is, the thing with Austria is that you can look out the window and there's like beautiful mountains and scenery and I love that kind of stuff. I look out my windows here and I've got a brick wall, you know, so it's not actually that fun. However, I do have all my things here, like my plants and like my TV and like it's all in English so I can understand it. But I do miss Austria. It was such a great adventure and I look back at it thinking, wow, I can't believe we did all, like I made the most of every single day. There was lots going on in the day. And it's difficult to be here at the moment, especially during this whole crisis, making my days worthwhile. So yeah, I do miss it. My next question, is Corona affecting Great Britain as bad as Austria? Yes. <laughs> I've heard news that we are about two weeks behind Italy in terms of the measures they're putting in and like the, the number of, of cases. I think it's affecting the whole world the same, but particularly the UK and you know people aren't following the self-isolating rules people are still going out and about which is crazy to me unfortunately that means like the government are probably gonna have to enforce it over the next few days and because people aren't listening but the whole acting industry has been closed essentially there's no work I may as well kiss goodbye to being an actor for a bit not even my normal bar job is open right now i'm unemployed quite a scary time especially for actors the next question one thing you disliked most about austria in restaurants <laughs> there's like a distinct lack of vegetables i don't know how you guys get your five a day like there are barely any greens like you can go and order a vegetarian dish or a vegan dish um in some places if you're lucky but like that's you're not gonna get you're not gonna get like your vegetables the way you would want to get your vegetables. Like if I were to order a schnitzel, it would just be schnitzel and potatoes, no greens. And to me, that's a bit weird. Sometimes when you're in, you know, small towns up a ski resort, you know, you don't get many options. You just get like classic traditional Austrian. So I found that my diet went from like very Mediterranean and like lots of vegetables to suddenly ham, meat and cheese. The lack of food options I miss. Other than in Vienna, like there's lots of good vegan places in Vienna. I'm not even a vegan, I just, I just craved like vegetables so I would look for vegan places. Okay, next question. <laughs> Do you have a boyfriend? I think I also got another question on this as well. Are you in a relationship? That's another question. No to do I have a boyfriend and no to am I in a relationship? <laughs> yeah, no, no. I'm single and happy and living my 22 year old life on my own. With lots of friends and good company around me and you know, I'm very career focused at the moment so I don't don't have a boyfriend, no, so yeah. The next question, oh, do you miss Boa? And what is your dream job and where would you like to live when you're older? For those of you that don't know, um, this is sent by one of my friends actually. Um, Boa is a performing arts college I went to when I was 
17. Um, it's like the equivalent of college, so like 17 and 18 year olds go there. It was just a performing arts school where I did musical theatre and then I did like an art A level on the side. And my friend Lauren asks this, you should go check Lauren out. If you want a really cool Instagram page to follow, um, go and follow lauren.austin, I'll link it here. But yeah, go follow it because she's got some really cool content and she works in like film and like telly and stuff like that. Yes, I do miss Boa. I liked it because it was they were simpler times, even though at the time when you're 17 and 18 and you're at college, you think you take it also, well, I took it very seriously. I saw it, some things as quite stressful, like, so we had assessments and performances to do, but actually I really did enjoy it. You know, it only gets harder from there on in, so. <laughs> at, that, at that point in life, I didn't have rent to pay. I didn't have to have a job, like, I mean, I did have a job. Did I have a job? I had a job yes I had a job for a bit there um but like I didn't have rent to pay and like pressure any money I earned was just to go and spend for myself and these days I live life you know when you're 22 and you've got a house to and bills to pay your money kind of goes there and you know if you're lucky you'll you'll spend money on something else it's usually just to eat and live um so yeah I do miss Boa and I also just miss being in art and we did our A level on the side and I just miss Lauren to be quite honest we had some right laughs it was fun. It was just an easy time. What is your dream job? I guess my trip to Austria is a form of my dream job. What, what would make me really happy in life is to be able to act and like travel at the same time. As a first job, I've been able to do that, um, which is really great. I would like to maybe look into different mediums, do like film as well. I think the ultimate dream is to be able to travel filming something. That's kind of where I want to be. Not just in front of the camera, but like behind the camera as well and being in a directorial role. I'd love to be a director and like use my acting skills and help other actors and stuff like that. I guess maybe to film a Netflix series abroad. That would be the dream in either role. Um, and where would you like to live when you're older? When I was younger, I always, obviously I'm from Birmingham and like that is a city in itself and like I would travel into the city from quite a young age by myself and go to college there and you know, as you know. Like when I was, when I was younger, like obviously having Birmingham around me, I was thinking, oh, I'd love to move to London and live in London because that's like the next step. And I'm never completely happy where I am to be quite honest. I wouldn't want to move anywhere else in the UK. So I guess the next step would be to maybe like travel abroad and live abroad somewhere. I definitely would like to go to America. I've never been to America before. I'd like to do the entire West Coast maybe for six months, a year. I would also love to do New York. As any actor, I think any act, ask any actor or any like kind of, any person that's like, you know, performance based, you know, they either say New York or LA, you know. <laughs> um, also France, you know, I'd love to move to France, like the south of France where it's hot. Is it hard to be a full-time actor when it comes to, this is in two parts, earning a stable income, especially as a newcomer? <sighs> yes, it is really hard <laughs> because I find that when you're an actor, you're juggling three things. There's social life, like income and craft. These three things, you can't have all three at one point. I don't think, unless you've got like a sugar daddy or something. <laughs> I would say, yeah, it's difficult because you have to kind of prioritize at certain points. Um, for me, I definitely would say I sacrifice my social life just to have like an income and to progress my career. Whereas some people don't need the income because they've got someone else to pay for it so they can have their social life and they can progress their career. Some people sacrifice the income and just live really, really frugally if they can and are stressed about money, but they have a social life and they can progress their career. Having come so far in terms of my training, I've, I've worked really hard to be here basically. I would think it would be such a waste to kind of like not progress my career and obviously I have to stay here so the social life is kind of the last priority but luckily you know I can get a social life out of my my day job you know my income based job I can get a social life out of that because it's bar work and you know you chat to people there so, but it is really hard I'm not gonna lie to you it's, it's very difficult unfortunately this industry is is like you know, shaped for the rich and the privileged. If you're not that, I'm not saying that I'm not, you know, I've got a very supportive family and like lots of supportive people around me as well, even here that don't need to be and I've just landed on my feet. It is very much cut out. This industry is cut out for people that have it given to them on a plate. It's a shame. Next question, what helps you stay sane and cope with the current situation? <laughs> Nothing, I'm going crazy. Talking to a camera, that helps me 
you know, stay alive and active to the world. I've been posting little videos of me singing and I like learning new songs on my guitar and that keeps me sane. But also maybe like FaceTiming people. I FaceTime a lot of people, especially during this because everyone's bored and everyone's at home and we are in quarantine and yeah. So yeah, that's that keeps me sane. Next question. Are you and Mark together, cryy face? <laughs> The answer is no. <laughs> you can't be friends with anyone these days, honestly. No, we're not because, I mean, that would be deeply unprofessional because we were on tour together. And also, secondly, when you're on tour and there's only four of you, you get really close. I know, like, we, we love each other dearly and, like, I'm... When I was on tour with him, I, we very much connected and we were very similar and we're not together though. No, <laughs> he would knock on my door and be like, take away? And like, I'd be like, yeah, in my pyjamas looking very, very, like, not attractive. So like, that's the kind of relationship we have. Like, I could very much just, you know, be myself and chill around him. But I do miss him though. But no, we're not in a relationship. Contrary to popular belief, even on the tours page, you know, people are like, are you guys together? Like, thinking they know something that we're not sharing, but no. And that's the Honest truth. We're just very close and very good friends and I can't wait when this is all over to go maybe go and see him and you know have coffee with him and whatever. Um, next question. Favourite cosy film? I don't know if this like qualifies as cosy. I don't know what qualifies as cosy but my favourite film that I love to you know snuggle on the sofa to. Pretty Woman. <laughs> I love that film so much. It's so lovely and feel good and it makes me feel happy. And it's a happy ending. And I just love it. I love the way you know Julia Roberts character like goes from zero to hero and like romance. And, like, I'm a sucker for that kind of thing. I just love like I don't know I, I cry every time I watch it because I love it that much. But yeah Julia Roberts is amazing in it. Obviously everyone else, but I mean like Julia Roberts is, is a queen, gorgeous human being. Next question is, how was Austria? Did you like it? Wanna come back someday? Austria was great. As I said, I love it, I miss it. I wanna go back there for sure. But there were some places that were nicer than others. I'm gonna say, never eat shredded wheat. The West side of Austria was my favorite. Innsbruck, Salzburg. Although I had a thing against Feldkirk, I don't know why. It was just, it was the hotel. It wasn't even the town, it was the hotel. Where like in the mountainous regions were gorgeous. So I'd definitely go back and visit somewhere like there. I would also, if I were to go back, I would go skiing because I wasn't allowed to go skiing on this trip because of my contract. But now, because I've been to so many lovely little skiing towns, I know where the best skiing towns are. So I want to come back someday and do a ski trip with some friends maybe even the cast that would be really cool the next question is how did you like traveling through austria again the same question I'm, I'm i feel like i'm answering the same question i loved it it was a lot of driving i must admit like we did we traveled the country multiple times. It got to the point where during the end of the tour, we were revisiting places we'd already been to and going to the same hotels and being like, hi, us again. Just a lot of driving, but I didn't have to drive, so. The next question, what was your favorite place in Austria? I did a post on the Q&A on, on, on the tour's Instagram about like my top places. They were Innsbruck, Salzburg, Saalfelden, but maybe I loved it because it was the, the hotel was like amazing. It had a spa and everything. I did a vlog on it. I liked Kufstein, but we went to Kufstein a second time and we got trapped there during the whole coronavirus issue. We stayed there for like five or six days. By that point, I'd done Kufstein like in the ins and outs of Kufstein and I was quite bored. But yeah, Innsbruck was just gorgeous. Very photogenic place, colorful buildings and good shopping. They had a lush there as well, I love that. Those are my favorite places. Oh, and we also met some really, this isn't less about the place, but like more about the people. We met some really nice people in Steyr when we performed to a slightly older audience. We went to the pub with them and that was really nice. The Irish pubs, there's a lot of Irish pubs in Austria, really weird. Next question, five things that make the Midlands better than London. Five. Midlands Midlands is where I'm from, London is where I live. The water, the water tastes a lot better in the Midlands. London water tastes terrible. And you can notice it when I make a cup of tea when I'm back at home, oh my God, the water's so much nicer. The roads and the drivers, people have no chill around here, okay? I would be driving on the road and like people are beep, 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 pushy, pushy at roundabouts. Calm down. People have places to be in London. And back in Birmingham, people are a bit more polite. Generally, I find that the people are a lot more patient on the roads. The accent, the accent is, 
rated one of the worst in the country but in my opinion it's one of the nicest <laughs> the house the houses and like the rent obviously when you're in london you pay extortionate prices for not a lot of content um, i'm lucky here i've got a really big living room and it's cheap but i am in, i'm not in central london at all by any stretch like very much far out of London. So I get a bit more for my money, but even then it's still expensive. A fifth one, I can't think of, so um, help me out here. Oh, this is not a question. Not a question, but I really enjoyed meeting you in Graz after the show. Ah, oh, thank you. I enjoyed meeting all you guys too. Um, where was Graz and what, what did the venue look like? Oh yes, Graz, the massive one. The Orpheum. I performed at the Orpheum in Graz. That, that was a really cool venue. The only thing I would say is that that venue had like what we call in acting a rake, which is the the stage has kind of a slant. And I remember the flats kind of rolling down. <laughs> I was in charge of moving a lot of the flats and the brakes stop, like don't really work very well. So the, I had to really move the flats and keep them stable so that they didn't move but, but yeah some great audiences as well i remember you guys being particularly responsive <laughs> so yeah i'm glad you enjoyed the show i'm really gutted that we won't be able to do it anymore but um thanks for coming and i'm glad you enjoyed it next question is why is the hanger shut now this is our final question this is from a local at the hanger the hanger is shut because number one boris says so and number two because there's people like me in this world who are carrying coronavirus without even knowing so it's actually really important that it shuts because yes it's terrible yes that means i've got no job right now yes, Yes, that means uh, you guys can't have a drink and enjoy it. However, it's so important that it is shut because I am the barmaid there and I could be spreading coronavirus to all of you because I have the symptoms. I'm just, I'm, because I'm young and my immune system is clearly very good at fighting things off, I have gone undetected essentially and I could have already spread it to you, who knows? So that is why the hanger is shut. Go on the website, get a takeaway. It means that you guys still get a drink and they still stay in business. Please take advantage of that. Go on the website. That is why the hangar is shut. I, I know it's not ideal and I hope it's not for long because you know, you can't lose a job. It is really important. And um, yeah, so please, please pay attention to that. So that was my um, Q and A. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you like it, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want. I'll be posting more random content. I cannot tell you what kind of stuff I'm gonna be posting because I don't know. If you've got any video suggestions that you want me to do please comment them in the box down below um have a good day guys stay safe i know it must be boring for you and all in quarantine and self-isolation but it is really important at this time but with that all said thank you very much and i'll see you next time with another video bye